Hello, my name is Justin Cooley, and I play Seth in Kimberly Akimbo, and this is Young Entertainment Mag. What is it like balancing schoolwork while becoming a successful actor? I feel like this is kind of a trick question for me because I actually did not end up going to school and I'm not in school now. Um, I was on my way to my freshman year of college when I was suddenly and wonderfully cast in this show and, you know, I unenrolled and packed my bags and jumped out here and got on stage. So I guess I just wouldn't be the best one to ask for that. <laughs> what initially drew me to Kimberly Akimbo was the really unorthodox and unique premise that the show was going upon. It's, it's weird and it's about weird people um, trying to navigate the complications and the and the despair that life can sometimes bring upon us and how to find joy even through themselves, even if they aren't the best equipped to do so. And that was just a beautiful story that really resonated with me and I felt like was something that I hadn't entirely seen done in this way. And I was also familiar with Janine Tesori and David Lindsay Abair throughout high school. I had known Thoroughly Modern Millie, Violet, Fun Home was one of the most impactful shows to me when I was younger. So seeing their names on it, I thought it was definitely something that I at least had to try for. Um, so the audition process was really an unexpected whirlwind of events for me. I was a part of the Jimmy Awards in 2021, the National High School Musical Theater Awards, and I was a finalist. And from there, the casting agency saw me and sent out a call, and I definitely wasn't expecting to book anything, but I thought it would be a great chance to just like get my name out there. Um, and so actually I was on my way to college, I was at college orientation, moving into my dorm when I got the email that they wanted to see a callback from me and they wanted me to come to New York the following week. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm not really expecting anything from this, but I'll go out and try and it'll be so cool. I had never been to New York before. And so I went out and little did I know, um, the day of that callback, I would get called back for a second round. And then after leaving that, get a call that they would love for me to be a part of the project. Um, and I kind of went into a whirlwind and was like, oh my goodness, called my school, called my parents, told everyone. Plans were changing. I gotta take, I gotta take this opportunity. Um, it was definitely scary at first, but something about it, I knew that I had to be a part of it. So interestingly enough, I did not meet Victoria um, during the audition process. We never did any chemistry reads. Um, we just kind of showed up one day and immediately knew like we were gonna be friends and that we could make this work. And so I think that was something kind of special. Maybe, maybe the, maybe the, creative team sensed that in us, <laughs> but we never met each other before. So that was something I feel like we both felt very lucky that we resonated with each other so quickly. Creating a new role was something entirely new for me. And it's been a wonderful experience um, with its own set of challenges and very remarkable things that are a part of it. Um, initially, it was very daunting because unlike all the roles I had played before in high school, there was just no guide, no guide to follow, not only in other performances, but when you're creating a new musical, even the script is in flux and even who the characters are is still coming into view. So, you know, 
in a way, there was a lot of freedom and responsibility that was hoisted upon me. And that was very frightening to have the confidence to try to invent my something myself and explore parts of myself I never had before and really put it all out there to try to create the most beautiful thing for everyone. But, you know, while it was very challenging in many ways, um, I learned a ton and I feel like in originating a role, you really get to learn about yourself because you get to be in a character and that's not, you know, concrete and bring so many different aspects of yourself to see what kind of lands and resonates and comes together in this story. Um, and of course, it's so fun to hear the music be created and see new jokes come up every day and see different actors work through things and really come to a picture based off of each other, you know? Um, being influenced by Vicky and me influencing our, her really shaped our characters in some ways. And that's a very beautiful and awesome experience to be a part of. Seth Wiedis is a, another student at Kim's High School, and he's definitely a bit of an oddball of the flock. <laughs> he's super nerdy. He's not the most socially gracious. He's definitely a bit weird, and people think that about him. So he doesn't have the most friends, doesn't really have any, but he just continues to try to navigate through life you know, he knows he's a bit of a goofball and he knows he just has to make it work. So he just keeps going with really unbridled curiosity and optimism and, you know, joy for the world and the things that he loves. And so he meets Kim and they kind of become unexpected friends. They're able to see in each other um, what other people don't really see at first glance. And I think that's really beautiful. And so throughout the story, you know, we start out happy, but definitely looking for something. Both, there's a sense of longing. Um, and we're able to kind of fill that to each other. And throughout the story, Seth really gets to fully embrace himself and the strength that he has and also the unknown and what he could be and what he could become and Seth is able to you know discover that from Kim and they're able to take each other on the greatest adventures that no one else would be able to for them and I think that's really beautiful. Playing the tuba in the show is definitely a, a never-ending journey. <laughs> um, I didn't know how to play the tuba when I first was a part of this project, um, but I was a band kid and I played the trumpet in middle school and maybe the team sensed that because they approached me. Um, they were like, I think we talk about the tuba so much, we have to have this tuba solo um, in this song. And so, I just got to it and, and started having lessons and it actually got to a point early in the run where they said I was getting too good and they were like, it's not funny, it's not as funny if he's too good at the tuba. So, um, you know, I kind of had to pull back and ground myself and when I think about Seth, I'm like, he definitely wouldn't be like an aficionado. He would be... He would be a kid who is earnestly trying his best. So um, because of that, it gets, you know, it's, it's a very dynamic performance. Some nights it's a little more questionable than others, but um, I think it's always entertaining and always true. So um, it's really fun. <laughs> Navigating the intimacy and affection between Seth and Kim was a daunting process for me and Vicky, for sure. Um, it was really equal parts personal and equal parts technical. You know, um, me and Vicky, our relationship as people really blossomed really quickly. Um, we became really fast friends and had a really deep connection um, throughout the process. So it came to you know, the building of their relationship kind of 
working backwards and being able to find um, that awkwardness and tentativeness around each other um, as these teenage characters. And I think rooting ourselves in that, in that relationship and in that experience is what really made every step of the way easier for us and, and more digestible, um, despite the fact that it's so pivotal to the plot and there's this age gap between us at the end of the day, it's really just two teenagers um, exploring the sensitivity and joy that this other person that is so important to them brings them. And so us being able to really root in that experience um, allowed us to really approach the affection and intimacy in a sensitive way that really just makes it a beautiful and and pivotal thing for the audiences. Victoria Clark has taught me so many things throughout this process and continues to every day. It's too it's too much to really properly chronicle now. <laughs> but um I think most importantly she used to tell me back at the Atlantic um, that you are enough. Everything that you have to bring and that you are now is special and is exactly what we want to see in this role. And that was a hard thing to get for me for sure. It was hard to transition from, you know, high school musical theater to working on a professional stage um, for hundreds of people to see and working with these renowned actors and actresses. Um, it was hard to believe in what I could give, but she told me day after day and really opened my eyes to the fact that what I have to give now as a 19 year old, as someone fresh, um, out of high school in this particular story, um, playing this character is special and the experiences that I've had are potent and are something that should be shared with the world. Um, so I think that's something I'm always going to take forward to meet my character and my role where I am and with what I have that's special to give right now. Um, and then, of course, she's also taught me so many technical things with her years of experience, like what vitamins to take, what what drinks to drink, <laughs> like to steam and to do all these things and to stretch. And that's all invaluable and very important and was was definitely a special thing that I wasn't expecting that I needed to learn getting into this job. But it's all been so invaluable. <laughs> now this is probably our most frequented question, how the ice skates work. Um, I can lay the rumors to rest here. <laughs> they are real ice skates that we use on this special like plastic alloy stage that we're able to walk on and then also skate on and when it's time to skate the actors put this special liquid like glycerin on their skates and then it makes it slip and slide just like it was real ice. And then the rest of us can still walk on it. It's, it's kind of crazy, but it's very cool. There's that, it's not a secret. It's out of the bag. <laughs> Along with acting and my personal experience, I think I've also been able to learn a lot about myself and who I am through this experience. Um, playing this role that is a little bit younger than me and kind of like a flashback to who I was back in high school has been so cathartic, you know, to play at this age where you're kind of really emerging into adulthood. But being able to play Seth has taught me, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to not always know the right answer and to be yourself and to be a little messy and be a little unhinged. Um, Cause I think that's the only way you can find the most joy for yourself. 
and I think it all kind of wraps together in like the themes of the show. It's a show all about, um, you know, taking stock of who you are and what you want and being true to yourself and using that to find the most joy you possibly can out of life. And I think it's really important, especially for teenagers. It's like the world is so open and the future has so many things that you could do. It's scary to not want to make a misstep. But I think this show has taught me that you only have one time around and that it's important to live it truly as yourself and embrace the good and the ugly and that doing that will will lead you. It'll lead you despite you knowing it or not. There are definitely times, you know, even through a Broadway run, I still get nervous um, suddenly and urgently before a scene or, you know, before a show even. And I think the best way I've kind of learned to work around that is really kind of imagining. Um, I might look kind of crazy, like talking to myself sometimes um, as Seth. And, you know, if I'm thinking about these lines that I have coming up or how I'm going to deliver them when I walk into the hallway, it really takes away the nerves to just think about how, you know, Seth isn't nervous about that because he doesn't even know that's about to happen. I'll think about like talking to my friend in band class or like cleaning my tuba before I get out to walk on the stage. So um, I think kind of rooting yourself in in the character and the world that they're in, um, whether if they're not nervous or maybe giving a reason to even justify why you're nervous, but let it be in character is something that really helps me get through those times whenever they strike. My favorite scene to do in Kimberly Akimbo is the scene towards the end of act one where Kim and Seth are having this intimate, awkward conversation in front of the lockers. And I can't spare the details, but Seth in his nerdy, unelegant, most awkward way that he possibly could wants to tell Kim that, you know, I want to be, I want to be your friend. And, you know, it's a scene the audience is always so invested in. We can hear them sigh, laugh. Aww. and for us as actors it's something that's like so different and like weird every day we're both filled with so much nervousness ourselves um and kind of excitement that it just creates something so fun and new every night despite really having this grounding and like two people just trying to bridge a gap between each other and it's beautiful <laughs> My decompressing process for the show is, you know, something that's kind of, I'm still figuring out, as I think a lot of people are. It's kind of dynamic depending on what you need, but I always try to just come home and like get in some free time of things I want to do, play some video games, watch YouTube, stop talking, most importantly. Sometimes I get the urge for late night karaoke and I have to not do that. Um, but otherwise, you know, just kind of relax, journal, meditate, put the show away for the night, you know, do something else you really enjoy, um, so you can wake up invigorated for it the next day. My favorite musical of all time is such a hard question, because there are so many choices, but, um, honestly, my favorite musical of all time is probably fun home but I think I'd want to be the mom so that probably doesn't really count in terms of a role that I would want to play. Rent is definitely a favorite. I would love to be Mark, Roger, I don't know, any role. I just want to have my rocker era for sure. Um, also Waitress, definitely a favorite and Dr. Pometer, such a good role. So fun, great songs. Um, honorable mention, I don't know if this is, it's not really my favorite musical, but like, I just want to play Spongebob really bad for some reason, one day. <laughs> After Kimberly Akimbo, I hope to keep acting and telling stories in a 
examining the world through that lens in really any way I can. Um, new musicals, plays, TV, television, I definitely want to be a part of all of it. So for Kimberly Akimbo and beyond, I'm definitely in it for the ride, for the long run. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Young Entertainment Mag.